This is the Plank EZ, a 47 key ortholinear mechanical keyboard from Ergodox, and it is my daily driver. For most people, a keyboard is a commodity. Pretty much any keyboard will do, and the one that came with your computer is often good enough. But I'm not one of these people. I love this Plank EZ keyboard in a way that I never believed I could love a data entry device. At first glance, it might not even look like it's big enough. It's missing the whole row of numbers, not to mention the F keys, but I think it's perfect. And recently, Ergodox added a super cool feature that makes it even better. A feature that helps me discover all that it can do after I've customized it just for me. I'm Matt Williams, and I'm the Techno Evangelist. Every couple of weeks, I release another video talking about the tools I use to help me get my job done. Sometimes it's a gadget, sometimes a device, and well, sometimes something else. I'm thinking of adding something to my process to help keep me, uh, regular with getting these videos out. I wanted to give you a chance to see where I'm going with my videos before I record them. It would take the form of a simple, somewhat regular newsletter. I'll tell you what I'm thinking of for some of the upcoming videos, and you can tell me if that'll be interesting for you and if you have any questions about it. You'll also get to see my research and maybe the backstory to the videos. And I'll include some of your questions in the video when I actually press record. I'll make it super easy to unsubscribe if you don't like what you're getting, and I won't share your details with anyone else. Look for more on that in the next few weeks. Okay, let's talk keyboards. There are many types and sizes of keyboards, though you're probably most familiar with something like this. This is the Apple Magic Keyboard with the numpad, and there's also one without it. The keys on these are staggered. There are plenty of articles and videos about why this is, but I love keyboards with a more ortholinear approach. My first ortholinear was the Type Matrix 2020, which was okay, but every time I plugged it in, I had to press a few buttons to ensure I configured it for my use case. I hated having to do this. Next came the Ergodox EZ, which was a dream. It split that ortholinear layout to two halves, each of which could tilt and tent to be just the right angle for you. I got a bunch of extra keys, which I thought at the time was useful. The downside was that it was huge. I wanted to travel with it and I couldn't. When I first got the Ergodox, the MacBook Pro keyboard sucked. And so I wanted to plug in an external keyboard every time I could. Some of the neatest features of the Ergodox was that the firmware was easy to flash and the keyboard had the ability to have lots of layers. More about layers in a bit. Now, thankfully, the MacBook Pro improved their keyboard in 2016 and my current 2018 is amazing. Yes, I realize that this is a contentious issue. Yes, for some reason, there are a vocal few that dislike the 2016 and later keyboards, but I feel that they are the most responsive, most comfortable, and closest to a good mechanical keyboard that Apple has ever made. I am still stuck with that awful, mushy feel on the external Apple keyboards, but thankfully I rarely need to use them. So when I saw that Ergodox was releasing a Plank-based keyboard, I placed an order right away. The Plank is a keyboard design from Jack Humbert of OLKB.com. This thing is close to perfect. I wish it split halfway and used lower profile keys, but even so, I still love it. It is immensely portable. I throw this in my bag when I go to work and when I come home. It came with me to Vegas for reInvent and for most other trips. I don't bring it when I go to a coffee shop, but everywhere else I do. The way to deal with its small size is by having lots of layers. So click a button and you have a new layer. 
and all the keys do something differently on that new layer. Now, if you think this is weird, every keyboard ever made has this. Okay, well, maybe some of the very first typewriters didn't, but everything in the last 100 years has. When you press and hold the shift key, you get a whole new set of characters that show up. On a Mac, and I think on Windows 2, you have a few more layers, though few people are actually use them. In case you don't understand what I'm talking about, open up an editor, hold the Option or Alt key down, and start typing. Now, with the Option key still held down, hold Shift as well and start typing. You'll notice that you get a lot of different extra symbols. Beside those, I have another two or three layers on my Planky Z that I use all the time. Oh, and to make things more complicated, I don't use the standard QWERTY layout. I use Workman. Okay, actually, I use an alternate called Workman Dead, and I changed it a bit to make it even more special just for me. I won't go into a lot of detail about that in this video, but here you can see an image of a QWERTY layout and then the Workman layout. And if you hit the key to go to the secondary layer, then this is that dead key layout. These are the layout images generated by the firmware tool, so you can see what it looks like on my keyboard. And looking at those images, you might notice that there is no shift key where you might expect it. There is one at the bottom right corner, but it's awkward to hit. I put it there because sometimes I just need it, but most of the time I don't bother. So how do I do capitals and punctuation? Well, I turned on a feature in the built into the keyboard called auto shift. It does what you might imagine, hitting shift when needed. The way it does this is if I hold a key for a certain amount of time, it presses the shifted version. For my configuration, that's 230 milliseconds. That's not a lot of time, but it's just enough and it works for me. The next layer is what we normally call the dead layer with Workman dead. On my Mac, I get that by pressing the comma key, but on the Planky Z, I go to where the left shift key would be. The reason they're different is that the firmware for these keyboards don't support a dead key. They do part of what a dead key is all about, but then that key is unusable on the new layer. I'm pretty good about knowing where everything is on this dead layer, especially with the brackets and numbers, but some of the other keys I don't remember all the time. Sometimes getting a plus sign or ampersand on the page requires a few tries. There are a few other layers, but I don't really need to go through them here. I think you get the idea. To make it a little easier to remember what layer I'm on, I've configured the backlighting to show the patterns of the keys. This is useful and a feature I wish was available for the Ergodox EZ when I originally bought it on Indiegogo. But even with the lights, I still sometimes print out the layouts to remember some of the less used keys. But Ergodox has solved this problem with the new train function. This is a page on their website which, when connected, will show you the current layout you're on. It's not a key logger in the traditional sense, but it shows what I'm typing. You can learn more about how they do what they're doing right here. Now, when I switch to a different layer, I can see what the layout is of the current keys, and that is amazing. To set it up, I visit the firmware definition site and click on train, connect to the keyboard, then to confirm, I need to hit the Oryx key. Now, I don't remember seeing the Oryx key before, so I needed to go set it up. I went into the firmware and added a key for that on one of my layers. To get to my Oryx key, I hit the bottom left key to switch layers, and then the top right key to switch to a different layer. Now this other layer is a special layer on my keyboard with only two keys to find. One is the reset button that you use when you want to flash the keyboard firmware, and the other is the Oryx key. Now the site and the keyboard are connected, and I can see how everything is set up. There is so much more to this keyboard that is exciting, but the new train feature opens more possibilities than anything else. I can create additional layers and have the tools in place to help me build that muscle memory. I love it, and I thought you might be interested too. You can find out more about the Ergodox here, and I've included a link to the layout I use in the description below. If you find videos like this interesting, consider subscribing to the channel, and be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I post new videos every eh, now and then, and subscribing is the best way to find new ones as they come out. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.
am I not in focus again? 